So, in the previous lecture, uh, we took up the new unit operation drying, and in that uh, in that case, uh, we said that each solid has certain characteristics of drying. In other words, if you want to you know design a large scale dryer, uh, we have to start with the uh, the solid which we want to dry, the say the sand or zeolites or alumina. And the more important here to note was that uh, for in drying this characteristics curve, so called the characteristics curve of drying not only depends upon the type of the solid, all right, it also depends upon the rate of the drying. That means, the operating conditions you know under which you are doing the drying that also makes a very significant difference, because we said that the drying is one unit operations, which is accompanied by both heat transport and mass transport. So, we have to look at you know the different uh, the conditions for heating say are we doing by microwave heating or have we exposed the entire surface area to heater some heater is there the flow through the solids or is there any air flowing just over the surface all right all of this will de determine say equilibrium concentration some moisture so this is slightly different from the previous say adsorption isotherms when we said that we fix the temperature then the isotherms given the partial pressure in the gas phase or concentration in the liquid phase, equilibrium concentration is fixed here. But here you must have noticed that there are so many other factors, they also play a major role. So, essentially what we are saying here that, uh, we have to take a sample of certain solid uh, and determine its drying characteristics. So, we will do a very simple experiment, suspend it in air, monitor its weight gain or weight loss. So, drying or wetting. Okay. There also we said that there is a hysteresis. So, the rate of drying is different from the rate of weight here. And more he important here is that we should ensure that the operating conditions, Reynolds number or the area of exposed for this batch of the solid at uh, live scale and you know the and some pilot plant or the industrial scale is as close as possible. Okay. So, first thing here is uh, establishing the characteristics of drying and we are talking about the batch drying to begin with. So, we have suspended a solid, zeolites, activated carbon fibers, charcoals, we have given certain Reynolds number. Okay. So, the solid dries and we monitor its weight loss and we get a characteristic curve. This curve is very important, we must understand it makes a, uh, you know the basic of your all calculations as far as the batch drying is concerned. Before that, if you recall, we also had one more characteristic curve, there we plotted partial pressure. So, equilibrium vapor pressure of moisture versus uh, moisture content and of course, we not dimensionalized on the equilibrium vapor pressure by the vapor pressure of pure water. Okay. So, that is one type of curve, very important curve one in case of drying and the second is, is uh, drying rate curve for this batch solids or batch drying. Okay. So, let us begin with this, we are trying to address here the rate of batch drying. All right, or we are trying to establish here drying rate curve. Okay, and uh, we said that we have to ensure that our lab scale or lab conditions are properly scaled, or they are similar to the real operating conditions under which we want to do this batch drying. So, we are doing here this batch drying. So, what we will do here? So, we have a solid and we monitor this weight loss. So, there is certain flow rate, okay, air, temperature, relative humidity, initial weight, certain diameter, certain type of solid, everything is right fixed here. So, if we uh, monitor its weight loss, we should expect uh, this type of curve. So, we have theta it is a time in hour and here we plot x how much is the weight loss or kg of moisture remaining in the solid. So, kg of moisture per kg of say dry solid. Here also we said that the two ways of doing this one is on the weight basis and the other is on the dry solid. Okay. So, we have both heat transfer and we have mass transfer right both so uh, at certain degree heat is transported to the solid and mass is getting out of this 
solid here, which is moisture. Now, if you do this experiment, you will expect that to begin with, if the solid is cold and this temperature of air is a very large hot air here, that there will be some initial adjustment time. So, which means there will be some rate here, say from A to B, where which would be slightly ill defined in the sense that air could be colder or the solid could be colder than this air or it could be hot. All right. So, here there is some initial adjustment, very small amount of uh, moisture will be lost here. So, initial adjustment period you can say. Then typically what happens is a very typical curve of most of the solids. Of course, there are always exceptions there. So, then after certain time, very small amount of time when the solid temperature has reached the air temperature, okay, steady state, then uh, there is a weight loss and this weight loss will go linearly like this. For some time, say let us mark it here C, the change in the moisture content is linear. All right. So, after the solid is warmed up or cold as is the temperature, one monitors very typically this linear change in the weight loss. Then there is a slow down Okay. So, let us see uh, we have till d here, d here. So, now we can say that there is a non-linear. We will see this later that this linear curve will represent constant rate, constant rate of drying and this non-linear or from c onward we will call it falling rate. We will come back to this later. So, at some rate this decreases non-linearly and then typically again it things get slow down. So, we have another uh, decrease very small decrease till the moisture content has reached say certain equilibrium values x c or x star. Okay. So, this is what we call it a characteristics, a typical characteristics, characteristics drying curve here. All right. Of course, a different solid will behave uh, differently what is most common that to begin with one observes a linear, then non-linear and then again it is non-linear and further uh, rate has slowed down here. So, now if you defined like in the previous class rate of drying as n. So, the most common and practical way of defining this rate of drying would be. So, let us say the amount of on the solid dry solid. So, without any moisture let us say S S if its area which is exposed for the to the drying is A. So, we can define as d x d t. So, in other words k g per second per meter square. So, that is the rate of drying defined like this. So, you can see that S s is the initial weight which is fixed, A is the area which is exposed. So, either you have a solid like this, slab like this and you want to dry from here or you have a solid like this and you are drying, you have some air flow past this area is of course, external area exposed area is fixed here. Now, here also we said that after some time when the say the solid is covered with some thin film, there will be patches that will develop here. So, of course, the wet area will be different, but what we are be writing here is the initial total area. So, this area is actually fixed as far as the definition for rate of drying is concerned. It is not the wet area not it is a dry area, it is a total area. So, d x by d t knowing x here, uh, we can do this del x over del t, we can take a small small time step after we have monitored all this rate and we can calculate this rate here. So, this is the curve 2 second type of remember if you had recall first we plotted relative humidity here, relative saturations right p bar over p 0 versus x or versus x here. Okay, so, that is number 1 in drying curve. Now, we have the second drying curve, which we have drawn x versus theta and from this we calculate n and then again we plot n versus x. So, this would be the third curve, which is quite important in our context. We will uh, revisit uh, them quite frequently. So, once we have x versus theta time, now we calculate n here, which is rate of drying. So, now at what rate moisture, kg of moisture is depleting from
from the solid surface over let us say we have meter square. So, that is the unit of this rate here. Now, we are starting with the very high amount of it. Let us say that to the extent that solid surface is covered with the very thin film of liquid kg of dry solid. So, that is the unit of this x. So, let us say that we are starting for a very large amount of this moisture. So, schematically you can say that we have the solid surface and there is a thin film of liquid or moist, moist solid. You can also say completely moist solid to the extent there is a thin film of liquid. So, you can also have a solid which you have suspended and there is a thin film of the solid here or thin film of liquid excuse me all right. So, if you recall the first going back to the previous one you have linear or there is some initial adjustment. So, when the solid gets heated or warmed up. So, you can have maybe like this or you can have like this starting with A. So, we can call you know initial adjustment initial adjustment and this is purely because of heat transfer. Solid either is getting heated up or is getting cooled up. So, either the rate decreases drastically, takes some adjustment over a very short time and or it uh, increases or the rate increases. Okay. Then since the x change linearly d x by d t, which you are plotting here d x by d t, you have s s over a. So, since x is uh, decreasing linearly, we will uh, expect that d x by d t will be constant. So, a then we start b. So, now the rate is constant till we hit the region which we called earlier as falling rate curve. So, let us mark this region as c. Why? Because x c we will call it as critical moisture content, critical moisture content. So, this represents that kg of moisture per kg of solid till or if the moisture content is greater than x c rate is constant here. Why rate is constant? We go back to the previous curve or previous discussions we had, we had thin film of liquids right. So, it is just like a constant rate of evaporations whether you are drawing from a solid surface or you have a pool of liquid all right it is all the same here critical moisture content. Now, after that so we can call it this is a constant rate. Okay. Or you can also call as saturated region. So, these are the different different terminology all of this they reflect the same meaning that solid is covered with thin film of liquid. Now, after that uh, we said that uh, x decreases non-linearly. So, the typically what happens here the rate decreases linearly all right so we are plotting dx by dt now the rate will decrease linear so as you said there's a typical uh, drying curve and different solids will ex exhibit different type of behavior but this most common here rate is a constant then rate decreases so till here we can say that this is a falling rate so we have constant rate and now we have a falling rate and here we said it's a saturated region now, we are saying that this region. So, let us mark here till it falls linearly, we will call it. So, C. So, we have x c and d let us call give some number here let us say x t. So, this is a region which is part of this falling rate except now we are calling it unsaturated region, unsaturated region. So, this is the region now you are start seeing the dry patches. So, some surface has been uh, dried up and some surface is still there is a thin film of liquid. Now, you recall also that it is possible or in fact it is like this that if you measure this kg per meter square of wet area per second then whether you are in this region or in this region the rate should be the same which is same as the rate of typical evaporations. Since we are defining to be consistent area which is the total area there is a decrease in this. So, as far as the mechanism is concerned 
whether the saturated region or unsaturated region most fundamental you know the two mechanisms are the same what we are seeing here the decrease is the artifact of this area which you have chosen it's total area mind you the actual area since because of the there are patches actual weight areas are smaller and getting smaller so if you measure per weight area the two will be the same so we have saturated region unsaturated region constant rate falling rate and go back to this now because there was a earlier uh, when we measured x versus time there was one more region where the drying rate has gone very very slow so you will expect some other rate it will fall like this when now it has reached x star or x e so this we define now the solid has reached an equilibrium concentrations all right so this is also equilibrium concentrations should go back and recall from a our first figure when we drew p bar over p0 versus t vapor pressure of pure water and the partial pressure or equilibrium vapor pressure in this there if you recall we had drawn like this typical curve like this till it reach at some point x star equilibrium concentrations moisture contents which is in equilibrium with the drying conditions or quality of air which we said let's say p some air over p0 pure water okay so this x star corresponds to this x star it's the same here now this solid cannot be dried below this it has reached a concentrations which corresponds to the partial pressure partial pressure which moisture exerts at the surface and that equals your whatever the quality of air relative humidity rh or relative saturation you have in the air so now you cannot go below this if you want to go below this x star you will have to lower you have to dry you use a drier air than what else you are using now come back to this um, this drying curve here let's go back constant rate falling rate so right here till here it's a both are falling rate so c to x star if you call it e for equilibrium so that we can mark this curve b c d e so b c it's a constant rate c e it's a falling rate and c e has two components c d it's a linear decrease so rate decreases linear and this we call it unsaturated region and then now we have d e that's more important uh, here also we should discuss that what is the mechanism here here the mechanism is the same what may whatever mechanism we had here is the same mechanism except now since there are wet patches so the area is different since we are plotting with the a total uh, moisture content divided by the total area will be decreasing will be smaller here now here also is a falling rate so second component except this is a region where now internal movement of moisture internal movement of moisture or you can say that now this is a region where now pore diffusion capillary effects see all these are they reflect the same meaning here capillary effects all of them they start taking place here that's why we have different characteristics from here to here and from here to so what we are trying to say here that if you have the solid surface bring in contact with some quality of air dry air as long as it's filled with covered with some thin film of liquid it's just like a common evaporation either you are evaporating from a solid surface or from a lake or from some river pool of water the two will be the same same rate of evaporation you will expect here and you will expect here this water will not see the solid here all right so we have plenty of pool of liquid here so the two rates are same as as long as the temperature is same and the drying air quality of the drying air is same however when now you have patches dry patches appears and then there are thin films here here also this rate of evaporation is same as this the two are the one and the same the all three in fact are the same but why we see a decrease here falling rate because we are expressing our rate based on the total area had we expressed based on the wet area then of course this would have been uh, since uh, would have been the same here so since the total area and this rate decreases because we have 
uh, evaporations moisture evaporates only from here all right then comes the third region where still it's a falling rate however now the capillary forces become important so now we are saying that the solid surfaces the deep solid surfaces their capillaries and the moisture has to be supplied so this moisture has to diffuse moisture has to diffuse by pore diffusion by knudsen diffusion all this we have talked when we took up the top previous unit operations here jobs and desorption same mechanism holds good here the this moisture has to be has to come to the top of the surface then it it will evaporate all right so now we are talking of the hidden moisture these are the surface moisture these are the moisture which comes from inside from within inside so we have seen the, the third type of falling uh, region where the rate was you know non linear here the rate was linear here the rate was constant okay and of course before this we talked of meissel adjustment where the solid gets warmed up or comes to equilibrium with this air temperature so one we call it second is a constant rate third is a falling rate except linear and the fourth is no non linear falling rate until at the end we have reached x star equilibrium concentrations you cannot dry your solid below this moisture content will be at the most x star here and the more important here this x star is one quantity which depends upon temperature of course it de depends upon the type of solid that's one thing all right it also depends upon the air quality so look at this equilibrium this is you cannot say that truly this is your thermodynamic equilibrium Uh, which we have seen in case of adsorption desorption here the drying has to do a lot depending upon in, in the heating arrangement rate of heating all of this to decide the heat of uh, rate of heating the uh, rate of drying all right so that more important here is of course the third curve which we obtain which is the characteristics of the solid but more important here is that we must be very, very careful that what we do in the batch in the lab must also replicate or as close as possible the operating condition or the drying condition on a large for a on large scale all right so what we do now we will like to uh reemphasize here that there are three characteristics curves traditionally when you say that characteristic curve one represents this rate versus x n versus x that's very important but we must also understand that we also have one more curve when we talk the bond moisture and unbond moisture free moistures all right here also you have x minus x star which is free moisture so x minus x star or xc is your free moisture all right so going back to the previous discussions now we have three curves one partial pressure over vapor pressure of pure water versus x that was the one kg moisture per kg of solid there we talked about bound moisture unbound free moistures remember the curve we have second one is x versus time that's a true experimental data for that type of solid and that type of operating conditions cross flow through flow surprisingly you know this x star remains that quantity which has not been quantified exactly you know for the type of the solids for the reasons here that things are so complicated pore diffusions nutson diffusion or the heating arrangement heating effects heat of radiations are you heating by microwave heating or you heating by conductions to have the flow through cross through or you just have a flow over the surface equilibrium concentration is a strong function of the operating conditions okay unlike any other previous you know thermodynamic equilibria we had we talked of absorptions given partial pressure how much is the solubility henry's law so uh, if you fix the solute ammonia and water temperature equilibrium curve is fixed then we talk about the relative volatility distillations we have y versus x curve for benzene water tolvin xylene all right if you fix the temperature then we have y versus x is fixed txy is fixed there is no operating conditions there then we talked of extractions solubilities immiscible fluids if we fix the temperature we fix the system we have this triangular equilibrium diagram a b c they are distributed by some phase diagram then we talked about adsorptions we fix the temperature then moisture content moisture loading or any solute loading given the partial pressure in the gas phase or given the concentration in the liquid phase we have isotherm langmuir friendlich whatever we have here x star 
because of this x star, uh, which is strongly dependent upon you know the operating condition. One has to ensure that you have established this equilibrium curve, which is x, uh, which is rate versus x, before you design a real system. And for that, you have to ensure that the two conditions, the batch and the lab conditions, or the pilot plant, or the industrial scale, they are as close as possible. Okay. So now we, what we do, uh, we will set up some equations. We like to study how long will it take, given this n versus uh, x curve, for certain solid, certain system. Uh, how long will it take to dry this solid from one moisture content to another moisture content? So we will set up the governing equations. Then we will like to take an example and we will put some numerical numbers there, and we will compute some quantities. All right. So let's take this. The second topic is time of drying. Okay. So we can we have to start from here. We have n versus x. If you leave aside, you know this is starting initial adjustment. Then you have b, then you have c. Decrease linearly, then non-linearly. So, C, D, E, you can mark this X C critical moisture. Corresponding to this, we have N C critical rate of drying. But notice that this is a flat. So, critical uh, rate of uh, uh, drying is constant between B and C. Then it decreases. So, this is a falling region. Let us say we reach till X T. Then we have reached till X star or X E. So, we will follow this nomenclature B, C, T, E. You do you can have A dotted line, which remains ill defined for most of the cases. Initial adjustment, we ignore this time here. Okay. Rate is defined N as minus S S, amount of solid, dry basis, total area which has been exposed for drying over d x over d theta. Theta is the time in hour. So, what is the total time? We just integrate theta. 0 to theta, let us say d theta equals S s over a, since it is a minus sign here, we can say x 2 over x 1 d x over n. So, we want to dry the solid from x 1 to x 2. Typically, you can have start from x 1 here, you can go all the way till x e, but here this x 1 and x 2, any two quantities in between, maybe they are on the falling linear here, maybe they are here may be x 1 is here and x 2 is all the way till down here. So, it is a very general expressions for calculating this total time of drying, which is integral of this quantity. So, first case is that immediately once you know n, you can find it by the area under the curve you from n, you calculate this curve 1 over n, plot x and whatever you have this, you calculate the area under the curve and then calculate this quantity theta. But realizing that the area here, this rate remains constant and the rate decreases linearly, we can have analytical expressions as well. We can avoid this numerical you know, integrations, whatever we have, we can have here. Okay. So, the first thing is that constant rate period. So, we are talking of C, B C, right? we neglected the initial adjustment. So, we have this B C. B c the rate is constant and N c. So, when you integrate this very simple integrations, theta will be S s over a, n is a constant. So, N c comes here and you have x 1 minus x 2. So, this x 2 now will correspond to actually whatever uh, concentration you have between b and c. So, this x 2 is greater than x 1, greater than x c, but this is smaller than x 1. All right, so, you understand. So, x 1 and x 2 is any quantities between a and c. x 1 is of course, the starting one. So, this is a very simple expression for constant rate period. There is no need for numerical integrations. You read n c from the graph and x 1 to all the way till x c, you can do these calculations. We will come back to this. We will take the example. Number 2 comes falling rate period. So, falling rate period, now we are talking of C to E, all right, all the way till it's falling. Of course, there are two uh, region A, where the curve is linear, 
starting from critical moisture contained X C to this D, D which is X T. So, here the rate is n equal to m x plus b, all right. You can assume n equal to m x plus b, then you can integrate linearly, you put it back there, very simple integrations, theta equal to s s over a, we have x 2, we have x 1, d x over m x plus b, which if you integrate, you will get s s, you have m slope of this curve here, a l n m x 1 plus b over m x 2 plus b. All right. You must realize that this m is a slope of the curve. So, any point between 2 n 1 minus n 2 x 1 minus x 2. Mind you this x 1 x 2 we now we are talking of in in here. So, now we are trying to integrate between this. This is the slope of the curve n 1 is nothing but m x 1 plus b n 2 is nothing but m x 2 plus b. All right. You can just put it there, if you would like to substitute this m here to obtain this expression for s s over a x 1 minus x 2 n 1 minus n 2 l n n 1 over n 2. So, now we are talking of x 1 and x 2, which is greater than x t, but it is less than x c. So, we are in this region. So, x 1 and x 2, let us say this is x 1, this is x 2, this is the rate n 2, this is the rate n 1. So, we got this expressions for linear falling curve. Okay. This can also be rearranged to if you notice that you have l n term here from our some previous context here, it is s s over a x 1 minus x 2 and we can call it n m. What is n m? You should recall is nothing but log arithmetic average. All right. So now we have these expressions for this, and now the third curve, which is also a falling rate. So we'll call it the region P A is D C. Now we are talking of this. Now D and E till we have reached equilibrium C. Okay. So, from here to here of course, uh, we do not have any analytical expressions, all it means we will have to integrate numerically. So, one we like to plot 1 over n and then this x, All right. whatever curve we have, take that curve, find the area under the curve to obtain this theta here. So, the same quantity which you have here has to be solved analytically. All right. Very often what happens that one makes an assumptions that after this constant rate which starts decreasing at critical moisture content, one makes this assumption that this curve is all the way till x c. Now, again this depends upon type of solid, where we can say that well this region is quite smaller than the total region, total theta or it is possible that uh, there is not much of change here, uh, whenever you have this inflection at d here. In that case, one can make a linear you know, assumptions right from here to here, to say that the rate is an approximation. This is m slope of the curve x minus x star, since we know this n c, which will be satisfying the equation of this line right from you know on this whatever we have here. We can say that this is nothing but slope is nothing but n c x minus x star minus x c minus x s star. So, this is another approximations one can do for this n c here. So, if you have n, n c is known, x c is known, x s star is known, equilibrium concentrations or x c, same here, here and theta can also be integrated to show that s s x c minus x s star over n c critical uh, rate corresponding to critical moistures into l n x 1 minus x star over x 2 minus x star. So, it is an approximations one can make or you can make do the numerical integration as well. All right. So, we have non analytical expressions as well as this numerical expressions. 
to calculate uh, total time of drying here. So, starting with this n versus x, n versus critical in this moisture content, if we identify all the points, constant rate decreasing, then further decreasing till it is x c, one can start with this general very basic definition for rate for drying and see which range is constant. You can do analytically, analytically, numerically or you can make this approximations and you can do the numerical integration as well. So, with that now we take an example for this uh, time of drying for a patch system. So, we take this example here, very simple example, but very basic. Uh, this is about batch, batch drying. Problem reads like this, something like this, that we want to decrease the moisture content from 25 to 6 percent, all right. So, we have to decrease the moisture content here. The more important here, it reads that what condition is this? We want to decrease under conditions identical to those for which the given drawing curve applies. So, this is what we have been trying to say earlier. It is very important that we understand this here first one has to start with the drying curve. All right. So, this is again very it's a different to what we had you know on different under the unit operations like adsorptions. There the isotherm is fixed for the system not for the operating conditions. Here the problem says that I have, I have the solids, it has a moisture content 25 percent all right. I want to decrease from 25 percent to 6 percent. However, the conditions are the same under which I have a drying curve available. So, this drying curve was generated a priori, it was generated before I want to do design a real system and we are hoping that this drying curve will represent the two conditions which are identical. Of course, it is not practical you know doing the experiment in the lab, laboratory or in the pilot plant or in the industrial scale, but that is the way it is the drying is there you know it is more of a engineering drying there are some approximations here. So, maybe we have kept the two Reynolds number same, here we have the same heating conditions, heating by radiations, same level of radiation, convection, same Reynolds number, same heating by conductions. So, that means, we have the thickness of the solid same as what we are going to face there in the real world. All right. So, with that, so we are starting with the drying curve and the drying curve is looks like this. So, we have x, we have n, the unit of n is kg meter square per second and this n is reported as n into 10 to the power 3 here. Let us put some number 0 0.3, we have 0 0.2, all right. let us put it 0 0.1 here and we have 0 here. So, you have this B C starting with B, we are ignoring A, uh, the rate is a constant till it hits C at this level of 0 0.3, it decreases linearly and decreases all the way till d. Let us say this d is 0 0.15. So, this is a falling linear rate from c to d. Then it starts decreasing non-linearly till it goes to all the way till concentration here which is x star and let us put this number at 0 0.05. From the graph let us put this number as 0 0.1 let us put this number as 0 0.2 and the first number here we have this on the graph as 0 0.3 okay. or maybe let us put it as 0 0.35. So, this is a 0 0.35 to 0 0.2, this is a constant, uh, this is your constant rate here, then it is a decreasing rate linearly, decreasing day rate non-linearly all these numbers are known to us. Now, we say that moisture content is 25 to 6 percent moisture, solid weight is total solid weight is 160 kg. Okay. To surface area or the area for drying available is 1 meter square per 40 kg of dry weight. So, 
from this we should be able to make a guess or make a compute that what we require is S s over a total weight that was the expressions for n. So, the number outside the integral word S s over a is nothing but 40. All right. So, k g of total weight dry weight uh, no moisture there per area. So, that is equal to 40. So, this is given to us total weight is 160 kg moisture content is 25. So, the initial moisture content on dry basis the all this is all dry basis right this is nothing but 0 0.25 over 1 minus 0 0.25 this we have done dry basis weight basis earlier in previous lectures it is always advantageous most of the time to work on this dry basis. So, 0 0.333 coi kg of moisture per kg of dry solid. what is x 2? 6 percent moisture. So, 0 0.06 over 1 minus 0 0.06 which is 0 0.064 same unit as before. So, where are we right now? 0 0.33. So, we are in this range very close to this that would be our starting x 1 and we have to go till 0 0.064 this is 0 0.1. So, we are going till here. So, we want to try this till 0 0.064 which is our x 2. So, from x 1 to x 2 that means, we are going to cover all three range constant falling rate, linear falling rate and this uh, uh, non linear falling rate till uh, this locations here which is 0 0.064. Okay. So, it is a very straightforward problem here x c is one quantity we should note immediately because we are going to use this. So, this x c is 0 0.2 and corresponding to this x c is we have n c which is 0 0.3 10 to the power minus 3. So, it in graph was reported like this. So, it is 10 to the power minus 3 k z per meter square per second. So, these are the two quantities of importance important parameters of a drying curve is a critical moisture content that reflects the range beyond which or below which you will have the falling rate beyond which you have constant rate pool of liquid etcetera we have talked those and critical uh, constant rate is 0 0.3 to the power minus 3 which remains constant between b and c. So, with this two all we have to do we can go back and substitute in our equations which we have developed you can start from the first principle it should not take much time to op start uh, obtain the final expressions which is x 1 minus x 2 over n c. So, S s over A is 40, x 1 minus x 2. So, we are starting with 0 0.333 constant rate goes till 0 0.2. So, this is the first constant rate we are trying to calculate theta between B and C. All right. So, 0 0.33 minus 0 0.22 divided by N C. We have read 0 0.3 10 to the power minus 3. You have 1 6 16 thousand seconds. So, it takes 16000 seconds for the moisture to dry from 0.33 initial concentrations initial content to theta c or x c where now you start seeing decrease in the falling rate in the rate. So, now you hit falling rate period already we have said n c is 0 0.3 10 to the power minus 3 corresponding to which x c is 0 0.2 units you have for both and now you want to you have to drive till 0 0.065. So, you have to go till n d all right. So, now we are going starting from c we go till d till you have the linear falling rate period. Okay. So, this n d if you read again from the graph this is 0 0.15 go back to the previous here this n d is 0 0.15 10 to the power minus 3 we have this x t you can read 0 0.1 units. So, theta f 1 1 to denote the first reason falling rate period is same as s s a x d x c. So, we are decreasing from x c to x d first we decrease from x 1 to x c now, we are decreasing moisture content from x c to x d 
we have dx over mx plus b all of those we integrated we can go back and integrate here we can just write down the final expressions when you substitute the slope of the curve we have x c minus x d n c minus n d ln n c over n d all these quantities are known to us all you have to do is to substitute s s by a is 40 x c minus x d 0.2 minus 0.1 0 0.1 n c minus n d 0 0.15 10 to the power minus 3 ln 0 0.3 divided by 0 0.15. Put all of these numbers to obtain approximately say 18,480 seconds. All right. So, now we are done with this c to d where the rate is falling linearly. It is linear. Here the rate was constant. Now, we come to the third rate. Let us plot n versus x uh, for last stage of drying. So, we have this uh, rate curve, drying curve like this n versus x for the last stage of the drying when the rate decreases non-linearly. So, already we did the calculation till d when the moisture content x d was 0 0.1. Okay. So, this is the non-linear part of the drying curve the last stage and corresponding to this uh, d we have the rate prescribed as or calculated as 0 0.15 and we have been asked to calculate how long will it take moisture content decreases from 0 0.1 to x2 which is 0 0.066. Equilibrium concentration that is the rate becomes 0 x e is 0 0.05. So, the question asked is uh, x t to x2 how long will it take what is the time here. Okay. We have the general expressions for drying theta equal to S s over A amount of solids over the area of drying x d integrated to x 2, we have d x over n. So, this is the general expressions for drying here and we are discussing here this non-linear non part of this curve right from here to here. Okay. This extended till x c becomes 0 0.05 at which the rate is 0. So, to integrate this you can see since it is a non-linear part here we require numerical integrations. So, some numerical integration technique you take as many as point possible here. So, let us say uh, we, we have x moisture content 0 0.1, 0 0.08 uh, decreases to 0 0.064. So, we have to go till it is below x d which was given as 0 0.066. We are starting from 0 0.1 your, that which is your x d equal to this. For this the rate in 10 to the power minus 3 is given as 0 0.15. These are the data 0 0.07, 0 0.04. You are supposed to take as many as data point in between for a very smooth curve here. All right, so, take as many points here. Since we have 1 by n dx, uh, we require 1 by n rate here, all right, which if you do it, you will get 6.67, 1 over 0 0.5, you will get 14.3, and then we have this 25, and some intermediate data points. All you are supposed to do is to plot 1 over n, you have x here, all right and your trend is like this, you have x t, you have x 2, essentially this integration d x by n between x t to x 2 is nothing but the area under this curve. So, calculate this area under the curve, take this as an exercise, put the values of S A S S to calculate theta, the time taken to reduce the moisture content from 0 0.1 to 0 0.066 is approximately 24,000 seconds. Okay. So, we have not three all three times total time for drying. First, we had remember for constant falling, constant rate which was 16000 seconds. So, this is the rate, at, this is the time over which the rate remains constant. 
moisture dries at a constant rate. Then we have falling rate, but we are the linear falling, rate, which was 18,480 seconds. And the third, which we just now we calculated for non-linear rate. So, this is linear, this is non-linear rate from 24, around 24,000 seconds. All right. So, total time is around 58,480 seconds to dry this solid under batch conditions. So, it is a very simple example and here we have uh, made use of certain analytical expressions or we have made use of certain numerical calculations to calculate the last quantity. We also said if you recall that one very good approximations which can also work, that if you assume that from B to C which is a constant rate when you hit this critical moisture content then the rate decreases linearly. So, we ignore this T point here or we are at least we are approximating that the rate which decreases non-linearly is very close to this uh, very approximately we can say that it is linear throughout. So, we hit still x c. So, that means still x 2 x c to x 2 we can do we can assume it is a linear right here throughout it is a linear. So, this is approximations. Uh, we also discussed and we can use the expression directly for theta all you have to do is now you have the same m x plus b n n c satisfies this here we have x c satisfying here we know this x c at which the rate is 0 that is equilibrium rate is 0 here. So, we know this quantity we know this quantity we know this quantity here x c one can also make use of this to find the slope, what is the slope here? We can go back, calculate this n, put in the integration equations. We showed that this number, assuming that entire rate of period is linear, falling rate is linear. We have S s x c x star n c, which is also known to us l n x c minus x star over x 2 minus x star. So, this is another expressions approximate approximations assuming that entire falling rate is linear. So, that we avoid this numerical integrations of course, depends upon type of the curve here may be in this case one can do one has to plot and convince himself that the error is not much here. So, this is by a is known to us this is 40 x c is 0 0.2 x star 0 0.05 0 0.05 equilibrium moisture contents x 2 you have to dry till 0 0.065. This is by a the whole quantity was 40 put all these numbers to obtain that you are getting this very very close to 18480 plus 24000 the two numbers which is 42480 seconds all right. So, in today's lecture uh, we have taken this example and before that uh, we had developed analytical expressions to calculate different time of drying for constant rate and falling rate linear non linearly for a batch system. And for that uh, we said that there are three very important drying characteristics curves. One is parcel pressure versus x, then you have x versus time and from that you calculate rate versus x. All three of them have important meanings in terms of you know understanding the mechanism of drying. What is the bound moisture? What is the unbound moisture? What is the falling rate? When does it happen? Why it is a linear artifact of the area? Why it is linear? The mechanism of evaporation is the same in two cases. Then there is a non-linear curve where we said that the drying is controlled by capillary forces or capillary effects. When there is a Knudsen diffusivity. Then we talked of this equilibrium concentrations, equilibrium content, which depends upon not only the type of the solids, but also on the operating conditions. So, based we marked all those regions, all three curves it should be familiar that play a major role in designing a, a real system, a real drying. Okay. So, that is about the batch drying. We have the example. Next time we when we meet, we talked of now the flow through. So, we have the solid batch of solids through which now the drying it hot air passes through. Here we have the solid and over which the air falls, air flows over. So, it is more like a semi batch kind of thing. Okay. The second one is also semi batch, solid is stationary, but now air will pass through this. 
And before we taking that, we will also talk talk about heat transport, how we can we are heating the dryer. Remember, we said that drying we have to give a due considerations to heat transport. The solid has to be heated by conductions, by convection, by radiations. So we will make use of our understanding, very basic understanding of heat transfer coefficients, convective heat transfer coefficients, radiation, etcetera, to address those issues here. Okay.